Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, it's video two of my series on availability and reliability calculations. And in this video, we are going to be calculating the availability percentage and the technical availability percentage. Okay, so let's get started. So if you look at the previous video, I'll leave a link below. Um, we set up the the data and we calculated these um, calculations here, the mean time between failures and the mean downtime. So in this video here, we're going to go and look at the availability calculations. So just to be clear, I want to go through a few different definitions and just um, just set the scene for, for, this, um, for this video here. So availability is the percentage of planned running time that is available for the provision of the machine's function. Okay, so the planned running time is quite important. I did cover that previously. So basically, it looks at how much time you expected or planned to run that machine and how much of that planned running time was it actually available to provide its function. Now, we've got a couple of things related to downtime. Previously, looking at the mean time between failure, we only looked at unplanned downtime. Availability is going to look at both unplanned downtime and planned downtime. Okay, so regardless of whether it's planned or unplanned, when we're calculating our, our availability, both of those mean the machine is unavailable. Okay, one of them is down for some sort of preventative maintenance activity and it is planned. The other one is a, is a breakdown. So they're, they're both different in nature, but ultimately the effect on the availability of the machine is the same. It's not available. So that's the first thing. And then we're going to look at two different calculations. The first one is going to be the, the, the availability calculation. So for that, we're going to look at the actual running time divided by the planned running time. So if we look at this example here, the planned running time is 24 hours. Okay, so we'll work a 24 hour shift pattern in this particular example here. Um, the machine actually ran for 20 hours. There was planned downtime of three hours and there was unplanned downtime of one hour. So the total downtime in this example here was four hours. So 20 divided by four is 83% availability. Okay, so that's the first calculation that we're going to go and, and create. The second is the, the technical availability calculation. Okay, now it's called different things, but in, in general terms, this is the gist of this is really just looking at the availability or the unavailability for unplanned downtime. So with that in mind, we've got the planned running time minus the unplanned downtime divided by the planned running time. So in this example here, we've got 24 and basically what only is the planned downtime and we're only subtracting here the unplanned downtime okay this one hour here and then we're dividing that by the planned run time so it's 96 percent technical availability and this really highlights how much of the unavailability is related to these events here which are unplanned downtime events which we can investigate and hopefully mitigate and reduce the likelihood of um, occurrence in the future so that's the two calculations and the definitions for the calculations we're going to go and create in Power BI. Okay, so in this example here, the planned runtime, okay, so this planned runtime is going to be the number of days um, that's selected here. Okay, so in this example here, it's from the 1st of the 1st, 2019 to the 31st of the 12th, 2020. So that's going to be our planned runtime. So if I go in here, this is a measure we're going to create. And first of all, we've got to get the maximum date selected and the minimum date selected. So we're going to use this calculate statement to go and find the maximum date on this values table. Now this values table, we did use it previously, is going to get all of the days across that whole date range that's um, that's been selected by this um, by this slicer here. Okay, and that's going to pass as that value there. And then we're going to get the minimum date across that values that have been actually selected there. So that's going to get those two. And then we're going to get the result, and the result is going to be the date, the difference between the two dates in days plus one. Okay, now the devil is in the detail here. So this date difference actually calculates the number of boundaries, boundary changes. Okay, so I've done an example here between the 1st of the 1st, 2020, 2019 and the 4th of the 1st, 2019. There's actually three days, there's actually four days in that date range, but the date changes from the 1st to the 2nd, and 2nd to the 3rd, and the 3rd to the 4th. So there's three boundary changes there, and that's what this is actually counting. So we're going to add one on to the end of that to get the actual number of days. And there's probably a better way of doing it than this, but this is going to get you the result that you need for this example here. 
OK, so next we need to take that planned running time in days and convert that into hours. OK, so to do that, we've got another measure. Now, this measure here multiplies the planned running time in days by the shift length. OK, so we've talked about this concept before, but basically we've got this idea of a shift length. And if we're the planned running time is 10 days and we're planning to run the machine for 12 hours a day, then that would be 120 hours would be the planned running time. If it was 24 hours a day, then it would be 240 hours. So this shift length, I covered it in the previous video, but if we click on here, we can see it's set at 24 there, okay? And you can define that shift length or modify that shift length if you want to in this um, this measure here. So now we've got the the planned running time in hours. We've got the available running time, we've got the planned running time. We can go and create this availability percentage calculation. I'm just going to paste that in. And um, yeah, so the actual running time between divided by the total time in the period analysed. And here it is there. So just let's add that in. And then we're going to just build it up in here. Now, I quite like to be able to see the, the components being added in here for the calculation. So let's start off by the actual running time, which we've got there. So it's fine. And then we've got the plan running time, uh, which is in hours, which is here. Which is going to be the same, actually, because it's just this date here. In fact, actually, let's add that as a card. Okay, so we'll add that as a card there, rather than have it in here, so I can take it out of this um, this table. And then let's add in the availability percentage. And then we need to convert that into percentage. Okay, so we can see here that the availability percentage is coming in, and we can sort this by the highest to lowest. And surprisingly this one here is the lowest availability because it's probably got the highest downtime yeah here we go it's got the highest unplanned downtime there so i just want to quickly just verify that that's right i'm going to go into um, our trusted friend excel and just check that calculation okay so i'm back in excel here and we can see we've got the 14352 divided by 17544 and that is 181 and then that's rounded up to one there so that seems to be working fine. OK, so next we're going to look at the technical availability. So here it is here. It's going to look at the planned one time minus the unplanned downtime. OK, so we're going to take out the equation divided by the planned one time. OK, so the technical availability is the planned running time minus the downtime divided by the planned running time. OK, so we'll add that in. OK, so we can see that technical availability is definitely a lot higher in each one of these instances, and that's because it's including the planned downtime as being part of the planned runtime and only taking into account the planned downtime when calculating the availability. So that is the, the second video in this series here where we've got the availability calculations. So the availability, the actual availability and the technical availability have both, both been calculated. So if you found this video useful, then it's always helpful and appreciated if you can give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the rest of the videos in this series when I release them, and also any other videos I release, then hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a new video, which is around about once a week. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.